Tilda Embroidery Quilt. This is now episode five. Um, as many of you will know, I've already done a whole series of six of these with Natasha on Natasha Makes. And I wanted to now just make sure that I finished off our own uh, series of what we were doing. And Natasha has very kindly let me use the last of her panels to get those right and ready to go. And today we are piecing these, we're stitching these together to make sure that your um, blocks that you've sewn together are going together really nicely and you are sewing these together. Now, one of the things I did want to touch base on about this is what some people have done, which is completely fine, but I need you to just pay attention to this, is what they've done is they have taken big chunks of fabric, plopped them on, and then sewn these together. Now, the only problem is very, very occasionally, like in this situation, you end up where you've actually sewn everything, all sewn together, but you've got a little hole and you've got a little space over here. So there's two reasons that could have happened. And that is either that you have not quite folded it correctly and you've sewn a little bit off the line and that's totally normal. We all do it. It's There's no problem. Don't get stressed about it. It is what it is. So if you do end up in a situation like that, I'm going to go through that at the end of the tutorial to show you how to do some troubleshooting. I might do that in video six. We'll see how we go. Um, but there's a little bit of troubleshooting needed on this panel, and that's okay. We all make mistakes. It happens. We're going to go through and fix it. But what I am going to do is I'm going to show you when you've got a whole completed panel, ready like this, already stitched down, ready to go, what you do need to pay attention on is where you have sewn strips together, like uh, where you've glued strips together like that. Just make sure that your quarter inch is the same on both sides. So when you then fold on that line, do yourself a favor, give it a little pinch, fold it back and check that your quarter inch is enough to cover that little bit extra. And at the moment, the way I'm looking at all of these, I think we're gonna be fine. There's a little bit of a longer gap on this line over here, but it's fine. If I know they're there, then I know how to deal with it. So on this line, what I'm gonna do is you can see it's absolutely fine over there. In the middle, it gets a bit bigger. So all you do is just pay attention as to where you've got those little gaps. And all you do now is when I get to the middle of this, I'm gonna go in a tiny little bit and grab a slightly larger seam. I'm not talking half an inch, don't do that. But if you did three eighths of an inch, between three eighths and a quarter, you'll be able to then just get that little bit extra in just to make sure that your seam is getting rid of any white showy bits out on the outside. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start going side to side first, okay? So you can tell there's nothing really standing out for me here. So what you're gonna do is on the back, you've obviously got your quilter's grid. You're gonna fold on the quilter's grid line of the set, because these are two inch blocks. You're gonna fold it on the line. Now, if you've got Wonder Clips, um, that is, these are perfect. So just, if you're just starting out, just make sure you do some Wonder Clips on it. Now, with all sewing, I'm gonna sew from this end to this end on that direction. And then when I get to this end, I'm gonna sew from this end to this end. It's gonna be a pain, I know, but it's fine. This is mindful sewing where you're gonna just sit down and enjoy yourself. And as you can tell, we're now gonna zoom in a little bit, if I can get this right. I have folded on that first line. Now, what I will say here is really important. Check your bobbin. <laughs> Ask me how I know. And you wanna make sure that you are consistent when you start sewing these together, okay? As you can tell, my terribly sophisticated Wi-Fi, a uh, terribly sophisticated camera requires me to move you into position. And at some point, when I'm grown up and got lots of money, I will have a proper, exciting studio with all the right equipment. But today is not that day. Right. So I am leaving my, I've got the function where my needle is down. So I've now anchored that point, ready to start. And I'm just clearing a little bit of space. Now I'm on the dining room table. So all I've done now is I've just cleared the space over here so that I can lay this as flat as possible as I'm going along, okay? And I'm just sewing a quarter of an inch all the way along this block. Now you've got nine of these. 
So at the point here, I can feel I'm getting a little bit of a bobble over there as I'm going. So just take your time, make sure that you feel everything along, make sure that your line is crisply on the edge over here. And by that, I mean, you can see as I fold it over there, the line is on the end. And if you, as you're feeding it through your machine, if you feel anything going a little bit of awry or a little bit strange, just stop, reposition everything and check that it is all okay. Okay, as I get to this point here, I can feel I've got a little bit of a lump over here. So I've investigated why that is. And you can see there's a tiny bit of an overlap of the pink and of the blue. So I've got a bit more fabric there than I expected, which is why I've got a little lump. And that's okay because I know what it is. Okay. So that's our first line. And as you can tell, I've tried to be as consistent as possible. Remember I said to you there was a little lump. That's what that is over there. And now all I'm going to do is just fold this back and check that I haven't got any white bits along the seam exposed. Um, and at the moment, I don't. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fold onto the second line. Now remember, I've sewn from this side to this side. So I'm now going to rotate this round and sew the other direction. Okay, exactly what we've done already. We're just going to sew in the other direction. Okay. I would recommend alternate, alternating the direction in which you're sewing, only because I think it gives you a nicer um, way of doing it, that you can just double check that you are not bending your fabric or causing a ripple. Because you know when you do normal sewing, if you sew everything in the right direction, you can end up with a little sort of banana effect on your fabric and you end up with a bit of a curve. And we're trying to avoid that. So alternate directions. And we are almost there. So I then open up again and just double check. I do think it does make your life that little bit easier, double checking as you go that everything's caught in your seam. And it just gives you, if because we've had a little bit of an error come up with something hasn't been trapped in the seam, I'm just preempting it. At the moment, I think everything's going to be absolutely fine until we get about halfway through. So just keep checking as you go along and see how you get on. I find leaving the needle down does make your life a little easier because you can then manipulate your fabric and your piece just to line everything up and give it a good solid go there. The important thing as you start sewing this is one thing to remember is you do not want this bit that you've already sewn to fold in on itself underneath. So do make sure that you're keeping that apart and separate. And I do think as you're feeling it over here, you'll be able to feel if the section's buckled up under here. So that's why I'm trying to be as tactile as possible with it as we go along. Okay, I'm gonna open that up check everything's okay. That looks good. Now on the next one along, you can see I've got quite a bit of a gap over here. So all I'm going to do now is just be mindful that that gap gets covered. This bit looks fine over here. You can see if I zoom out. Oh. Um, you can see this bit over here looks absolutely fine, but you've got a little bit of a gap over there. So when I get to this bit, I'm just going to be mindful of the fact that I've caught everything in that seam. I sewed from that end to this end in this direction. So I'm going to now flip everything over and sew the other way. Okay, so I'm getting to the point now where I've got a slightly larger gap over here. 
So I'm going to stick with my quarter inch all the way along. I'm going to trust the process. I'm going to trust the fabric. And I'm just going to then open it up when I'm finished. And double check I got everything correct. And as I said, you just trust the process. And boom, you can see that's all sewn in perfectly there. Tiny little bit of a gap there, but you can see that's easily going to be caught in your stitch, th um, stitch seam allowance. And you just keep going around and you keep doing this 18 times, because if I'm not mistaken, we've got 18 rows here. It's incredibly mindful to be able to do this. Just a nice way of being able to just take an evening and just do some sewing. Remembering to be as consistent as possible, making sure that you're, I've got bits falling off the end of the table, making sure that I've got everything lined up and I'm making sure that when I feel along here, I haven't got the, this bit over here curled up underneath it. Okay, you don't have to fold this back every time you go. As I said earlier, because we had a small little error on the last one, I am gonna just make sure as I go along. I'm just taking a moment to reposition everything here because my line went a little bit squiffy. Okay, and we keep going then and we're gonna double check everything's all right. Yep, that's all okay. Now over here, I can see I've got a tiny bit of a gap there, so I'm just gonna be mindful when I get to that bit, but everything else looks absolutely fine. Folding this back. We're getting there nice and slowly. You can see we're not quite halfway yet. Now, one thing to notice at this point over here, one thing to notice at this point over here, my fabric has started to lean in one direction. Um, it does happen, but all you do then is just take a moment, have as big an area as you can, and just then put everything back into position where it should be, position it back, and check everything's okay. Rolling that back, and that looks as though we've caught everything over here. These were the two little area bits that I was a bit worried about over here. Those are caught fine. And now we're on to the next row. And just over here, you can see there's a little bit of an area there. We're just gonna be mindful of that as we come along.
down. Once you've done the seam, fold it back, check everything's been caught, and it has. And you just keep going on and on and on and on. Okay, so we've done that seam, and you can tell that the seaming is you're just going a quarter of an inch past that line, giving that a good old stitch. When you finish, you roll it back and check that everything's been hidden in your seam lines there, and it has. Now this one looks fine. I'm expecting a little bit of a lump over here. There's a tiny bit of fabric bit moved over. And the next line is the one that I'm just gonna be mindful of as we go along. Okay, so that one's worked fine. Um, and there we go. Give your fabric a bit of a shake. I think we're coming up to the halfway mark, if this isn't already the halfway mark. Okay, and I remember I said I was a little worried in the middle there, but all of those seams have gone. And over here, we're now just gonna be mindful because that's a reasonably large gap over there. Shaking my thing to get everything lined up. So if you are in the situation where you know you have got an area here, you're not quite gonna catch, as long as you make sure that the beginning and the end are completely lined up because those are really important because you have to line these up with a piece next to it to sew it. You can veer in a little bit. Now by a little bit, I wouldn't go more than an eighth of an inch because it is gonna show and it is gonna look as though something's drastically wrong on your quilt. So try not to go too big in your gap if you are going to be overcompensating that way. I don't recommend it. I think it's easier to cut the squares first and make sure that everything is lined up properly before you start sewing. It's just that way you check that you fix all the problems before you start. Also keep checking as you're going along that your stitching has happened. We all know how many times a bobbin runs out when you don't know it. Okay, so I think this was the one that I was most worried about. And you can see that's all been caught in your seam allowance, no problem whatsoever. Okay, so now we're gonna fold that back one more time, flip it over. I'm just checking, I thought I had a thread break there, but I didn't. And I'm just, when you do this, I'm just giving it a little bit of a pull because the line over here wasn't quite as straight as it could have been. This bit is very important when you're doing it because it's very often that these curl up on itself like that and you can sew over it as you go. Just make sure that everything is as flat as you can get it it happens to the very best of us. And if it happens to you, don't get upset, don't get worried. Just unpick it and go from there. Okay, so we've done it. One, two, three, four, five more lines to go. 
That's caught everything there beautifully. I'm not worried about this line at all. You can see there's more than enough gaps, uh, more than enough fabric to cover everything there. Okay. got four more to go just double checking that all looks great four more to go from left to right then we're going to start our up and down Just keep remembering everything just needs to be consistent. You're lining your straight edge over here where the fold is against your quarter inch mark. The reason I didn't check it was because I know that the fabric, there was more than enough to cover everything. Happy with that. Two more runs to go. And the last run as we go along. I'm just going to double check. I've got no reasons for concern there. Now, it is important that when you fold it, don't fold it like that with the lines ever so slightly off. Even if it naturally goes to that point, squeeze it so that you make sure that your line is on the edge. You don't want to do that because that means when you sew it on, it's going to be completely, not completely wrong, but it'll be a little bit off. So you're rolling that up so that it's perfect at that point there. Okay, that's just something to bear in mind, especially at the beginning and the end of your rows, because when you line these up to sew them together, you want them as accurate as you can possibly get them. So especially at the beginning and the end, you need to be as consistent as you can possibly be. If you are a little bit out, there are friendly persuasion ways of doing it. Just try not to be in the position where you need them. And we're almost, almost finished our horizontal lines on here. Okay, so all of our horizontal lines are now sewn along here. So at this point, you can go and press it. You don't really need to. But the important thing is to make the decision now of, are you going to press your seams one way or the other? Okay, I am going to press them and I'm going to do them consistently like this, but I am going to show you regardless of this, I am going to show you if you did want to press your seams open, what you're going to do. Now, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take the smallest knife, you, put, you can do a knife, you can do a thing, but this is probably too big. So this is going to make my life a bit more difficult. So 
When you want to press your seams open, you take the smallest part of your scissors and you put that into this little hole over here. And you're gonna cut a straight line all across the end there. Now you do not have to do this. If you do choose to do this, that's totally fine. If you choose not to, that's fine too. It is a lot more work. It is considerably more work. Um, and when you then go to press everything, you're pressing your seams open. I personally have not done it this way. And what you would do is you would then take this, you would go to your iron and you would then press all of your seams open. Now, there are three reasons, well, there are two reasons you would do this. If you go and you press your seams open, when you go to quilt your quilt, it's a lot flatter because you can't deny, because you've got the quilter's grid in there, when you do it like this, there is a bump. And you can tell on the front there, you can see that there's a little shadow of a bump over there by using the quilter's grid, and it is thicker. You've got two layers of fabric, you've got two layers of quilter's grid, they are folded on top of each other. You've got this fold in there, you've got that fold in there. It, you know, it is more fabric. You are gonna get a lump if you do it this way. I don't mind a lump. For me, I'm happy with a lump. But if you're not, and you want to make it a bit better, you're gonna go and you're gonna cut every single seam, the whole length of the fabric, all the way along, 18 times to go sideways. You're gonna press those seams open. Then you're gonna do the other way and you're gonna press those seams open. I'm not. Sorry, I'm not. I'm a very busy person and I don't have time. The next thing you've got to do is you've got to recognize which direction you are going to have everything going. Now, this is number panel number seven, okay? So this is now on the bottom left-hand corner and you can see all of these are pointing down. So you've got to then make the decision of the one that's in the middle, which is number eight. You can press all the seams up because if you press all the seams up, you then, just checking, so all of these seams are pressed up so that when I line up my number seven and my number eight, so this is seven, this is eight, when I come to put these two together, when I nestle these together, so I'm gonna sew these along that line, you can see these nest beautifully. So my personal preference is to have the outer two going down and the middle one going up because when I come to sew these together, they nest. I like a nest, it's easier. I don't pin. So, and you pin, you must do what works for you, it's your quilt. But for me, I like that little nesting process because it just gives me that little, the, you just got that little extra security that you know that you're doing your best to make it sure all line up. Okay, so when I come to piece these together, I'm then gonna push these together like this and make sure that we get it that way. Okay, so that's what I'm doing with these. The other way to remember is obviously where you're going um, vertically. I'm pressing number one and number three in one direction, and I'm pressing the middle row in another direction because again, then I can nest them. So it's the same principle there, just a lot more seams. So if that's how you wanna do it, that's not how you wanna do it, it's your quilt. That's how I'm doing it. You can decide how best you want to do it as well. So by using that token, this is my block number nine. This is the top of number nine. This is the bottom of number nine. And I'm going to have all my seams going down. Okay. So I'm going to sew my very first seam over here. I'm not going to press it because I'm, I've done this many times. So you are welcome to go and you can press them with pleasure. I don't need to because I've done this many times. You do what works for you. But I'm going to make sure that I fold all of these going down all the way. And exactly like before, like I did when I'm going sideways, I'm going to go up, down, down, up, up, down, down, up in the direction of sewing. Okay? So we're going to start now. We're going to double check. This is the top. This is the bottom. This is the left. This is the right. I'm going to fold this so that all my seams are going down. And I'm going to start stitching exactly like I did before. I'm going to give that a bit of a tug and I'm going to fold this on the line over here. And it is a little more difficult and the first two or three are quite hard. Take your time. You've got this. I see that we've had a message in from Fl the Fluffy 1966. Hello. I'm glad to see this. I'm working on the quilt now. Oh, awesome. Please send me pictures. I really want to see how it's all going with you. Be kind to yourself. You've got this. 
Okay, so now we're going to do this, as I've said to you now, because I know all of my seams here need to press down, I'm going to fold this on the line I know I need to sew. I'm going to check there's nothing that I need to worry about on this line. So I'm on the second line, and I'm just going to turn everything ready to go and have my seams pointing down. Okay, you don't need to see me ironing all of this. You've all used an iron before. You know what you're doing. And I'm going to do this nice and slowly. This is going to take a little longer, so I'm going to make sure I do it nice and slowly. I've got my needle down in the needle down position, and I'm simply manipulating the fabric so that I've got a perfect quarter inch, which is consistent all the way along. And you can see the fabric over here, if I zoom in, I'm not sure if I'll be able to zoom in again. These are automatically folding down as I go along. This one hasn't, so I'm just going to then mind, just go through and make sure that everything is pointing down as before I even get to it. So by doing this, you can then line everything up there. And I'm going to sew two or three blocks. And you can hear as I'm going over a little lump, it gives you that little dunk dunk as it goes along. And that's absolutely fine. Just be mindful that that's why it is. You've got a lot of fabric at that point. If you have got the patience and the time, go and cut your seams apart. Press everything open. It is nicer. It can be better. I just don't have the time to do it all. And I don't mind a little lump when I'm quilting. I think it adds a bit more 3D character to it. But you must do what works for you. So you can see that took a lot longer than the last one, but I wanted to make sure that all my seams are going in the right direction, which they are, all of them going down. I'm trying to zoom out now. There we go. So all of my seams are going in the right direction here. I'm gonna fold it back and check that thing's sticking out, which it isn't. And then I'm gonna rotate my work because I don't wanna be sewing top to bottom, top to bottom the whole way. So now we're going to do, now this one's a little more difficult because obviously you have to make sure that all of your seams are pressed forward. So it becomes a little difficult because your um, feed dogs are automatically trying to push the seam back on itself. And you've then got this bit curling in on itself. So this bit is, I think, the hardest run to do on all of the nine blocks. So just take your time. There's no rush. There's no need to race. Just take it nice and slow and get it going along the way. Alrighty. Now I have pressed these as well. Um, and the reason I haven't pressed is personally, I found even with pressing, everything folds anyway. So that's why I just give this a little bit of pressure as I'm doing it. And you can see I'm gently pulling on this and making sure that everything's staying out of the way of the needle. Um, just to be able, I personally found that I didn't have as good an effect with pressing as I did with using my, just taking my time and doing this slowly. I personally prefer this but equally you are welcome to go and press everything into submission, whatever works best for you. So you saw this one here had folded, so I need to make sure that as I'm going along, everything's being consistent. And there we go. The 
bottom one had turned over as well, and this one. So you can see I'm just gently manipulating them so that they're all pointing in the right direction. And there we go. Okay, so numbers one and two are now done. And you can see that's worked really well. And you just keep going, all right? So again, remember to turn your work as you go. Make sure that you've got everything going in the right direction. Turn this over. Now I know that everything's okay because I'm still in the blue section and I've used big chunks of blue all the way along. Folding this right. This way is a little easier because the feed dogs help you do the job of making sure that everything's pointing in the same direction. But you can tell whether you're doing number seven or number eight or number one, the methodology here is identical. You do not have to start with going horizontally. You can go vertically first, whatever works for you. I just found going horizontally worked better for me. So that's why the way I did it that way. I'm going to do one more row going the other way just so that you can see what I'm doing but I think I've made it clear the way that I'm going along and you're literally just rotating this as you go along making sure that all of your seams are staying in the right direction you don't want to end up with a twist in your fabric um, only because it'll become it just it, you just don't want to it just makes your life a lot easier having everything going in the right direction making sure that you've got a consistent seam as you go along. I'm going to bring you a little closer, hopefully, and maybe zoom in a little bit. Whoops, my camera's fallen over. Zoom in a little bit. Hopefully that'll show you a bit more what I mean. So I'm trying to keep all my seams going in the right direction there. Remember, as you're doing this, these are automatically going to curl in on itself. You want to make sure that you keep this away because it is very, very easy for these to form, fall into your stitch line over there. And trust me, you do not want to be unpicking this. It is a rather difficult task to be doing. Wonder clips at this point are very, very helpful. You can then you can put a wonder clip on each one of these as you're going down. So these two, as you can see, are twisted down. So I'm just going to fold those forward. And it's very easy to miss them. And if you do miss them, that's okay. Be kind to yourself. It just makes your life that little easier if you do take the time and make sure that you've got everything lined up, ready to go. Okay, so now we've done another row here. You can see these are all continually going in the same line. And then I'm going to fold this back. We're going to do one more row. 
And I think that will then give you the full description of what you're doing. And we'll call that a night. I always say to people, make sure you check your bobbin. Just every now and then check that your stitches are being stitched. It's very easy to run out of bobbin and it makes your life a little more annoying when you've got to go back and check that everything is, or you've just got to re-stitch everything. So you can see the process on what you're doing and you can tell how you get to that point. You then are going to end up with multiple rows like this. Um, as I said, these ones, this is number seven, they're pointing down. Number eight, when you do number eight and you come to put it together, these are pointing up. So all you do then, you put them together and you sew down the way, nesting your seams as you go. And I've just realized I've turned this the wrong way round. Don't do that. Make sure you get it the right way round. Be with the caller. So that is there, okay? So when you sew these together, you can tell they're the same length <laughs> and you're making sure that everything is lined up and you're nesting your seams as you go along, okay? So that's for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And then when you come to put your pieces together, which are going the full length of the quilt, you're gonna do exactly the same thing because when you put these together, you can see what we've done is we've had nested seams all the way along and we've nested the two going along. So you're going to do exactly the same methodology this way. My video number six is going to be troubleshooting. It's going to be showing you where things have gone wrong, how you fix it, what you're doing. Um, and it's a really, it's just more a case of when things go wrong. And it happens. It happens. Be kind to yourself, enjoy yourself and stop worrying. That is video number five. I hope you enjoy this Tilda quilt. And if you have, there's a new one. There's a new one. Uh, and of course, the fabric is sold out everywhere. My shop is that big. All the other people's shops are that big. And they're huge and amazing and wonderful. I'm not that big. I don't get to see all the things in advance. So I am putting an order through for when the stock next, come in, next comes in, which will probably be around May 2023. And I will then have some kits for the new Tilda Embroidery Vase Quilt, which... It's a little bit special, just a little bit special. This is divine. It's one of the most fabulous quilts to make. We have used the Vlizalina Quilters Grid on the back. You don't need to. You can sew the squares yourself. You don't need to use the Vlizalina Quilters Grid. We just found it easier with the color by numbers. That's how we prefer to do it. So I look forward to seeing your makes. Please pop onto the iQuilt Studio Facebook page. Share your images with it. I'm really, really excited to see them all. The Fluffy 1966 has just said, thank you so much. I find your tutorial so informative. Thank you very much. That's very kind of you. I hope it helps. I hope it works. I'm going to finish on doing these blocks uh, now. And then we're going to do a tutorial on what do we do when things go a little bit awry. Um, and then we will catch up on that one. Oh, I've just seen this one's not finished either. Because that's the problem. Right, I remember now. So have Fun. Remember, even when you make mistakes, this is meant to be fun. If you're not enjoying it, why? You need to be 
have a fabulous evening. Thank you for joining me. And I will be doing number six probably later tonight. Otherwise, first thing tomorrow. Look after yourselves. Stay well. Look after yourselves. Stay well. Keep soon. Bye-bye.